welcome, my dear Chris, and welcome each one of you who are seeing us or watching us. Uh, it's great to have you here, as always, Chris, and have these soul conversations with you because it is, um, it is, I think, an auspicious time uh, for us here in pla on planet Earth. We as humans have been here evolving, but I think that we have to expand our consciousness to the new octave that are awaiting us and that will lead us to that future which we all want and we all share, right? That's exactly it, Alberto. And in this time of juxtaposition of the past with the present and the future, that curvature of time, uh, it is essential that we grab hold of what would serve our future, what creates the platform of our evolution, and what needs to be released. And that's why I wrote that book, Psychogenetics, for us to see where things come from so that we could untether ourselves um, for example, uh, very directly in the first line of psychogenetics from our parents. Not right. that they are not useful, that they have not given us great wisdom. We choose them spiritually. But uh, very often, much of what they pass to us through the legacy of psychogenetics um, has been passed to them and doesn't serve us. Many of the thought forms of cultural attitudes or, or the limitations of sense of self uh, come from uh, these uh, interactions and what my higher self says is that genes are just a genetic habit okay. and by that I mean that genes are alive mm, they are just a pairing of, of letters and how we get genes science looks at it you know from a frozen perspective in a microscope so to speak and says well these are the genes that you've inherited but they don't know where they came from they know that they came from the family or whatever. But they, what I have found is that the experiences, this is why it's called psychogenetics, the experiences of our forefathers become our genetic imprints, our genetic legacy. Okay. And so when we talk about inherited diseases, for example, we talked about this once before, um, we don't get them because of the biochemical aspect of genes. We get them just as much or even more importantly, we get them through the psychogenetic inheritance. In other words, the spiritual DNA and the emotional DNA that we uh, take on uh, through our relations way back. And, and, and we psychogenetically inherit not just from our bloodlines. Right. We can inherit from people who marry into our family. We can inherit from our children. We can inherit from an institution uh, because it's simply where the soul latches on because of karma, because of many incarnations of the soul, brings in a pattern uh, that we inherit from someone else. And that pattern is usually there to um, either be dissolved or to support us. And one of the things that I was thinking about this morning is that um, science uh, is looking at this time to heal us. So it's looking at all the genetic imbalances, the right. negative side of, you know, how can we manipulate these genes so that we don't have these diseases? Let's hope that's the best thing science is doing. Whereas when I'm looking at psychogenetics, I'm looking at freeing ourselves. And remember that when we free ourselves, we also free whoever we're entangled with. Mm -hmm. uh, spiritually or emotionally, mm -hmm. uh, even if they've passed from their bodies. But I'm also looking at from whom did you inherit uh, qualities that will take you into the future, that will help you to be wise or to uh, be inventive or to be loving or to have that spiritual energy influence your capacity to heal. All of these things are embedded in our psychogenetic inheritance. And so I find that very exciting for this time on the planet because right now uh, we feel vulnerable. People feel that this terrible virus is, is going to get us or the governments are, you know, that our freedoms are being taken away. And right. so it's very important right now to access um, those qualities, psychogenetic qualities, they could be physical or physiological, they could be emotional, mental, or spiritual that 
can give us the power to pass through these initiations uh, so that we, we really are the forerunners of a new species of humans uh, because of uh, what we have activated. Uh, imagine in the past where there have been people who lived thousands of years, hundreds of years or thousands of years, according to um, some myths, which uh -huh. may be true. Uh -huh. There are people who um, had tremendous qualities of manifestation, whole civilizations like the Lemurians who were able to manifest all the food they wanted, whatever they wanted. This is embedded in us. And at this time on the planet, it's very important to begin to seek out very positive psychogenetic imprints that will uh, take us away from our fear, that will take us away from, from that sense that the outside world is controlling our destiny. No, the inside world is controlling our destiny all the way down past our thought forms, past our emotions, all the way down to the genes and chromosomes that hold those um, stories, that hold those energies. So that makes psychogenetics very, very important for this time. Right, exactly. You know, uh, last week I was talking exactly about this with a couple of colleagues they are psychologists here in Mexico. And I was telling them, um, I was sharing with them this, um, this vision you are, you, are, you are speaking about. They, they were telling me, Alberto, you know, um, we are predetermined by our genes. I mean, you, there are things you just can't change. And I was uh, telling them, well, it, you're telling me that just because you are not opening uh, your vision to the hologram, the hologram. Yes. You are you are thinking um, in a linear way, you know. Yes. You are you are thinking, or or you are even limited by your own conceptions. And we entered all this uh, all these um, holographic holographic uh, concepts or aspects of life. And I um, I, I wasn't uh, I, I didn't want to convince them. I just wanted to share them. Uh, this vision, but I was amazed on how difficult is, it is for some people to open their awareness to these new aspects of these. Well, they are not new, but they may be new for the academics, you know, but they are not new yes. for the human soul. My higher self always says, um, the only thing that matters is the way we live our lives. Uh -huh. So that you enter into the dialogue. The result is not yours. You planted right. a seed. Maybe right. maybe the day after you talked to them, they began to ruminate. Exactly. Could that be true? Could we change these things? Again, wh what is their experience? Uh, my yeah. higher self always says that the only truth is what we experience. And that changes every day with our experiences. But their experiences, that's what science tells them. That's right. what society tells them. You inherited this and this. But I, it kind of tickles me because science is beginning to explore our emotional DNA. Right. We know, everyone knows that, that to say, well, I inherited my sense of humor from my uncle is valid. We can see that. There's your uncle, he does that, and now you do that too. You have since you're a child. We just haven't seen that, or science hasn't found it psychogenetically on the genetic patternings, but we know it's there, and that's emotional DNA. So I, I think it's wonderful that you had the conversation. And yes, uh, people feel doomed. You know, that this is why. <laughs> And, and I must giggle a little bit and say, you know, we humans are a very uh, sheep-like uh, species. We follow each other. We want to be in groups. We really do. And so this is why we see on the planet mm, patterns of uh, heart disease right. and then diabetes and then cancer right. and all of these these diseases come in groups. And they and right now we have viruses that are passing right. around the planet. Could it be that part of that is that in our consciousness, we feel like, well, everybody else has it, so I will get it as well. Right. And the moment you think, because my family has it or, or everyone else has it, I will get it, you will. 
right. you are inviting it into you. And right. That's why psychogenetics is so important to begin to. And I think an exercise that we could do first this morning is to look at that. And this is very advanced work. Uh -huh. We can look at that on our genetic encoding. From whom, for example, in your family, did you inherit a very robust and healthy immune system, a healthy body uh, that protected you from, from all of the environmental things that are happening? Mm -hmm. Because once your consciousness recognizes that, it shifts you from, like they were saying, but, but this is preordained. There's nothing you can do. Oh, yes, yeah. there is. Yeah. Right. This is how you do it. Yeah. We're a little bit, as usual, uh, we're a little bit more advanced than science. And remember that the true science is to explore right. and then to figure out how you can repeat it. Right. And that's what makes it true. Right. And uh, we can repeat all of this. Right. <clears throat> I, have seen, I have seen in uh, intensives, people's faces change, their bodies change in four days, uh, simply by doing psychogenetics. That's a physiological uh, alteration that's so profound mm -hmm. you know, to change the structure of your face because you saw something in your mind uh, that changed uh, who you think you are. It's fantastic and very exciting. Right. And this gives us, absolutely, this gives us the, um, the, um, the intention. Uh, we can have the intentionality. This is what I want to say. We can have the intentionality and we can actually do it to interact with our genetic uh, imprints, with our with a hologram of our genes, with a with this matrix, which is the hologram of our soul, which encompasses our body, our emotions, our mind, our spirit, or our soul, um, we can be active there. It's not that we are yeah. just receptive. That's right. But let me throw a little gink uh, in this, in terms of. The idea of intentionality, mm. because for many people, you know, their, their sense of in, intentionality is, okay, I focus on this and this is what I want. They're yeah. doing it through their mind. I'm talking about doing it through consciousness, which is, as you were talking about, holographic. You know, it includes um, our 70 senses. It includes things that consciously we are often not aware of. We're, we're very rarely aware of our intuition. We're very rarely aware uh, of how much we know. We often will say, I felt that would happen, or I knew that. But we don't, beforehand, when you get that impression, we don't activate on that. We don't take action with that. Right. And, and so we have to take that intentionality into a very holographic perspective to, to bring it into manifestation. Exactly. Otherwise, again, we can repeat and repeat Exactly. This is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. But our higher selves, our soul energy has yeah. to orchestrate that hologram. It has to pull from the unmanifest and from the periphery right. people, situations, energies that right. come together, that coalesce to create manifestation, to take from the unmanifest, uh, which is just the idea, the thought, and bring it into form. Right. And so it's psychogenetics gives us a way to do that. Exactly. It's all, it's all about the, the perspective of our higher self and not from our little ego that wants and wants and wants, but has not the complete, the complete vision, right? That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's very fun to begin to see ourselves, to experience ourselves beyond the limitation of our, of our small mind. Right. You know, right. this is, this is the power of meditation is that it expands uh, our perceptive qualities, you mm. know? And uh, so we, we, want to, we want to feel bigger, to imagine bigger, to see what serves, mm -hmm. and not just what we think is rational. Right. Rationality is good, it's good, but uh, we, we want more than just that because rationality is based on what we know, what we can perceive now. That's true. It's not based on all of the infinite points of reference that would expand that truth or even change it. 
Exactly. Well, let's start with an exercise so you can lead us right. through. Okay. I'd like to do this one uh, about the inheritance, the psychogenetic inheritance of strong bodies, of healthy bodies, of healthy immune systems, because that is what will change whether you get COVID or the flu or anything else that might hurt you or not. And so we could do it in the negative as well, which would be, when we're doing um, our intensives on that, of course, we would go back and forth. But I think it would be most helpful for everyone who's joining us to come to that. Let me say something about that first That's to prepare you. Works. What we're going to do is that we're going to actually look at our, in this case, we're going to look at our physical genetic inheritance. So we're going to look for the psychogenetic imprints uh, from whom we've inherited, and we're going to imagine that we're seeing them on our DNA. This, what we see is just a double helix. Of mm. course, that double helix has many more strands than, than two. But we're going to imagine that we can find that point of reference, and then we're going to open that up. And so that goes, again, deeper than the mind and deeper than the body. When I ask, um, ask your... Um, ask your uh, DNA to show you the exact point where you hold that uh, legacy of health. And um, it's not in the body. It's not going to be, it's in my heart or my shoulder or someplace. It's going to be on your DNA. And you can imagine that DNA any way you like. There's no right or wrong about that, but just to go deeply into the genetic level. And that's where we're going to bring it forth or dissolve it. So, um, if we understand that, then we can begin. Perfect. Let's do it. Yeah. So let's all close our eyes. And again, we always begin with our breath because when we exhale, we bring that deepening, slowing down of our alpha waves, our brain waves, which allow the expansion of consciousness, which allow us to go into a meditative state where these answers and truths abide. So breathe in through your nose, and now slowly out through your mouth. And ask your body from home in your family constellation. This could be way back uh, in your family tree. It could be on a diagonal, aunts and uncles and, and great aunts, for example, or horizontal cousins and, and partners. and all of that, from whom in your family constellation you inherited a strong physical genetic encoding, a strong immune system, a strong body, healthy organs to live long. And just open your consciousness and wait and see who comes. It might be someone very close to you. It might be someone you've never seen or even heard of. To breathe deeply. From whom have you inherited a powerful physical body? Just see if the first person kind of pops into your consciousness. And just extend your consciousness to them and feel that, that physical energy, that immune system that is so powerful. And now, ask them what frequency of light they need from you to be able to completely transmit all of those genetic encodings into you and be released karmically. So imagine a color that they might ask for. They have to choose it. And then reach up into the cosmos with your consciousness and imagine you're pulling down a beam of that frequency of light, that color, down through the top of your head and out through your solar plexus and extend it out to them so that they take that in. And there is this beautiful dance, that figure eight dance of, of giving and receiving that as they take that color in, uh, you can realize that there's an amplification 
of that genetic encoding they have passed psychogenetically to you. And as that occurs, as you're giving them the light and receiving, allow them to fade away so that they're being released and you are now inheriting these energies. And now with another deep breath and a long exhale, ask your body to show you the precise point on your DNA, on your physical DNA, where you hold that psychogenetic physical inheritance from them, of a strong immune system, of a strong body that you may have never known you had. It might look like a, a, a spot of light, a star, a pool of water, a beam of light. It could look like anything. Just let yourself find that point on your DNA that holds that inheritance, that legacy of health. And now ask your higher self to show you the brightest, most radiant white light and laser it into that point of legacy of health and allow that white light to, to explode, to expand, to activate and open, amplify that genetic encoding that you have inherited. So feel as if you can experience that, feeling it or seeing it in your mind's eye or hearing it, this amplification of that inheritance of health. And now, command the trillions of cells of your body, trillions of cells, to imprint that expansion, that activation of your genetic encoding of health. And feel as if every cell in your body is now recording that and activating it so that they are they are beginning to use that energy that you may never have used because you weren't aware of it. Allow your consciousness to, to experience that flowing through all the cells of your body. And then imagine that you could radiate out that like a, like a message that you extend out through your electromagnetic field, your auric field, extend out that that vibration of immunity, of health, power of the body. Now send that out through your auric field and feel as it goes out from you that it's combing and brushing and instilling that energy into your auric field and then radiate it out. Maybe you want to radiate it out to your family or friends or lovers so that you are imprinting their impression of you. And at the same time, you are opening for them to also sense the power of their physical form, the health of their physical form. Just radiate it out. And take a deep breath into your body and open your eyes. And when you open your eyes, feel that that energy is still filling you and radiating out from you. So that we know that it's not just when we sequester ourselves in meditation, but that we carry this no matter what we're doing. No matter what we're doing, what we're feeling, what is happening, we are holding that and radiating it so that it is imprinting that's how we change our genes. That's how we influence our genes. They're just couples of letters and we can change them uh, in the same way we took in uh, those things. Exactly. So 
I think that's a great exercise in consciousness. That I, I didn't break it up. We could just ask from whom did you inherit something and then stick with that because it's so interesting and then go into the second part of it. But I wanted to put it together so that we could see the hologram. So if you can remember all of that, tell me from whom you got that you inherited a healthy body, a strong immune system. Well, let me tell you, it, it, is, uh, it was from my grandmother. My grandmother. And your paternal grandfather or your maternal grandfather? Uh, my paternal. Paternal. Yeah. Good. Yeah. She lived yeah. until last May, a hundred years. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And so it's so important in, in again, recognizing that, that she lived a hundred years and you have just activated that inside you. Right. You know, and that's, that's pretty exciting in terms of shifting our thought forms and our fears and anxieties into a place of, she did it, I could do it. You did say grandmother, right? Grandmother, right. Oh, grandmother or grandfather? No, my grandmother from, my, from the side of my father. That's what I thought. Okay, uh -huh. I just wanted to make sure. That's uh -huh. fantastic. And um, so you probably saw her. Did you see her? Yes, yes, I, I saw her. See? Yeah, but she was, uh, I saw her, I saw her image just quickly. The, the rest was all the frequencies. Yes. Oh. yes. No, no, no. I didn't mean in this exercise because you may not see them in your exercise. You may be okay. pulling up someone who's five generations behind you. Okay. You know, and so that's, that's a good point. You may not see them. I just meant in this lifetime had you known her because I wanted to point out that sometimes somebody comes in that you've heard about, mm -hmm. but you've never known. Okay, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. You live yeah. to be 100. How fantastic is that? And so tell us what, what did that uh, point of reference look like? for you on your DNA? How, how did that look like to you? Well, uh, I'm talking about this deeper level. Um, it, we can go from organs, okay. you know, to blood, to cells, uh, from cells to actually um, the genetics, genes and chromosomes. So I wanted you to look at the genes and chromosomes on which that sits, because it sits in them. We want to go into the gene level, into the psychogenetic gene level and see it from there, because that's where you're going to um, expand that. Yeah, I understand. To tell you the truth, I, I was just there. I just merged with that uh, frequency of light. And all of a sudden what I saw was how it began to do this movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. And I, and Good. I went through that. Yes. Good. So it's really important to see that point mm -hmm. because it's only when we perceive something. That's why we say that experience is the only truth because we have to have a sense of it. So when we see, when you could see um, that, that, that light that your higher self was giving you, that bright white light, which is the light that influences the genetics. Uh, it's interesting that, uh, you know, if you were sending light to someone, for example, you sent light to your grandmother, um, we wouldn't just say, oh, white light is the best, we'll send that, because white light is so strong, it may not be what people need. You have to let them choose. And so, when, but, but when we're working on genetics, it's the white light because it's the photon light that, that is the source of all matter. Yeah. And so, uh, so that brilliant white light that you're talking about is what made the genetics begin to move and, and again, incorporate through all, imagine, through all of the genes that we have uh, and chromosomes, that imprint, that legacy, the psychogenetic inheritance of your grandmother. What well, color did she ask from you? Well, exactly. That's what I wanted to tell you. What she asked me for was this uh, pink uh, with go with a very golden uh, um, I don't know how to say it, brilliance, you know. Yes, yes. But uh, at, in the in the end, of course, everything melted or merged with uh, with that white light you're speaking about. 
And that's what she asked, pink and gold. No, that's so perfect. And that's exactly my, what I was wanting to, uh, to uh, teach us, mm -hmm. is that when you ask them what color they want, they're gonna pick a color that re reflects them. So that pink, of course, is perfect love. Mm -hmm. And the gold around it, that, that sort of brilliant gold light, that's, that's within the, the golden chakra, that's within the heaven zones, what we call heaven out of the angelic frequencies. So your, your grandmother, whether she experienced it or showed it in this lifetime, uh, I can tell you right now, her, her soul's consciousness is within that angelic realm. Okay. So that's it's exquisite to see something like that. Right. And then of course the white light comes in that is this cosmic source of all. Okay. Absolutely. I love it. And, and with that white light, all the rest, all, all, all my, all my cells reverberated. Everything began yeah. reverberating with that light, and it just exploded there. Fantastic, and and, and this is again an example of um, using consciousness, or in other words, using the capacity of the mind to focus on something, to command that every cell hold what you just shifted, or what you just amplified. You know, and that's why you, you got that vibration because when you commanded all of your cells to align to that frequency of health and immunity, then uh, that that created that quickening, which you feel as a, you know, a vibrating motion. Uh, you know, the pulse and the waves, it's fantastic. Yes, yes. Wonderful. Yes. I wanted to, to tell you that in the last weeks, my, in, during my meditations, some of the meditations, I've been also watching that uh, with you and in YouTube, those meditations you do. Um, my heart self has been showing me something and it is, uh, it is a, a, a beam of light that starts in my heart, then goes all up, all the way through my back enters my head, goes out through my uh, third eye, comes back to my heart, then goes down but, uh, through the back of my, of my, 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 my back or my, my spine, comes through the base chakra and again to my, to my heart. But from there, it goes to the back, then to the front, then to the left, then to the right, you know? It's, a, it's kind of a spiral that is moving all the way around up and down, left, right, in front and back. Yeah, so, that, so that's a direction of energy that's moving uh, and, and winding the fibers of your uh, auric field uh, with your physicality, which is really a wonderful thing to happen. Because what, what happens when, when this occurs is that um, it, it, it amplifies and strengthens the auric field again, and extends that energy out. When we give cranials, and I think, I'm not sure which of my uh, YouTubes you were looking at, but there's one where I talk about this figure eight of white light. And so you're actually doing the figure eight of white light, but what's happening is that it's, it's then going sideways, uh -huh. you know, and up and down. When we do cranials, we do the same thing, it comes up the back, and then, at, uh, and then it flips over with a big figure eight at the top and comes down the front. So it doesn't matter how you see that, but this orchestration of white light is actually creating this uh, figure eight. And it's like a Mobius strip in that it has no front or back. You know, it's magical really, like Mobius strips. And uh, that's why the Egyptians had that, the figure of the Ankh. Right. Um, they were describing that as well. The exactly. energy and comes down <laughs> the side. and so yeah um, what a wonderful thing for your higher self to give you right right well you just said it i, I i've been also perceiving that that figure the ankh yes yes of course we have been talking about this uh in a physical way but there are also we have also um DNA that comes from the angelic realms, maybe from the divic uh, realms, which are the realms of nature or galactic realms, right? What, what can you tell us about that? 
Well, I want to save that for another conversation okay. that comes out of my book, All Bodies, except to say that thank you for bringing that up because for some people, just to think about emotional DNA or spiritual DNA, what happens if you could visualize it this way is that we have our physical DNA and then covering that like a, like a beautiful skin, like a snake skin, is our emotional DNA. And this is why our emotional frequencies influence our physicality. This is why if you're afraid of something, uh, you tend to tr attract it to you <laughs> physically. Uh, because again, uh, my higher self says that the only disease is fear. And right. then on top of those two surrounding them is our spiritual DNA. So when we're accessing our spiritual DNA, this creates a hologram, um, which is what we are working with very much uh, consciously, more or less, in, in this realm. But we have um, David DNA, angelic DNA, and uh, galactic DNA. Of course, we have galactic DNA um, because we're part of a galaxy. Right. And we and the stars and all of the consciousness and all of the energies in our galaxy are sourced with a carbon atom, mm -hmm. which is a, a sort of a, a neutralized form of light. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, we have galactic DNA, but it's what we could do with that if we began to become aware of it, how we could access actual uh, consciousness that that comes from other other star systems from, from other places. And that's pretty exciting. The same is true with the angelic kingdom. Um, uh, angels are our cousin species. Uh -huh. They don't take physical form, but they have energetic form. And so there's a lot we can uh, learn from that once we activate those genetics. And then the divik, some people don't understand what the word divik is. Divik means the spirit of nature. So water has a spirit and a tree has a spirit and everything holds consciousness. Uh, it's so amazing to see the consciousness, to become aware of the consciousness uh, in nature. And I think it's very important right now because uh, we need to talk to the sky. I have a, in one of my YouTube things, I have a blue sky challenge, which is about clearing the, the pollution from the sky with our consciousness. You know, we can actually send an energy into the uh, molecular structure of the sky and release pollutions, push them back into the unmanifest. There's so many things that we need to do uh, on a devic level. And that's why I feel that's very important. Yes. But, and, and those might, uh, sometimes the devic kingdom, the angelic kingdom and the galactic kingdom overlap and especially into our spiritual DNA. Okay. Because they are part of who we are on a more expanded level. Huh. You know, we're not just flesh and bones and blood. Exactly. <laughs> we are consciousness. Um, I love to work with the endocrine system because the endocrine system, which puts hormones into the blood, into the organs, that and the endocrine system is the threshold between our physiological body and our light bodies. So there, there are always, as I was talking about the, the initial three and then these others, uh, they're always interwoven in this. And so it's how our consciousness um, focuses on them right. that can bring them into form so we can wield them in ways that not only serve ourselves, but our, our purpose in life, which is to balance our planet, to evolve the soul uh, of humanity. Right. And so uh, all of them are very, very important. Uh, but to think of our, I'll just give a little blurb about that spiritual DNA. When we're doing the intensives, the, the psychogenetic intensives, and we come to that spiritual DNA, we would be surprised how many spiritual concepts we have that are frozen in the past. You know, uh, that we, would, we wouldn't think of as, as being true today. Uh -huh. One of the things that that I talk about is that, you know, we often have fear or hatred or, uh, or separation from people of other religions. And these things have been imprinted in us by our forefathers who lived and died. If you go back 
uh, a few hundred years, you will see that almost in every country, whoever the king was or the, or the powers that be, if you didn't align with their religious ideas, you were killed. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, we have brought these things into today's world. I use the example of the Muslims and the Christians because the Christians slaughtered the Muslims a few hundred years ago, four or 500 years ago. Right. And uh, call them the infidels. Yes. They were afraid of them and they were afraid of their abundance and, and their energies. They never learned who they were or the gifts that they could have shared. And now the Muslims, not all the Muslims, but the fanatics, and they're fanatics on, in all religions, are now saying that the Christians are yes. the infidel. Right. It should be, should be wiped out. Right. This is karma. This yes. is cause and effect. And this is psychogenetics in its, in its worst uh, expression. Right. So when we look at spiritual DNA, uh, we, want, we want to find these thought forms and these fears and these energies and release them and come to a place where we, we realize that whether you call God a, a male being, uh, as, as do both mu Muslims and, and Christians, uh, or, or you think of the, the divine source, you know, if you see God in a tree or a dog, right. by the way, I'm here in this, in this uh, recording we're doing, you're hearing this constant, beautiful breathing like the sea. Yeah. I don't know if you hear, but it's very loud. <laughs> That's my big um, <laughs> Rhodesian Ridgeback lying on the couch, breathing in and out as he sleeps. He yeah. loves to be wherever I am doing these kinds of um, interviews or conversations or or when I'm doing consultations, he insists on being there. Why? Hey. Not just a dog. He's a he's a being of consciousness. Right. And so it's like see, so if any of you have been disturbed by that, have a little smile and you know, <laughs> imagine it's just breathing in and the breathing out, like life, like the cosmos, breathing in and breathing out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Now that you just, uh, you, you mentioned carbon and how uh, everything is based in carbon. But uh, let me ask you if this gives us a clue for our potential because carbon, when it is exposed to very great pressures, it produces a diamond. That's why we love diamonds. Exactly. We see that heart, but we see that bio, that, that, um, uh, Trans transformation energy that is there, that alchemy that is there exactly. in diamonds. That's right. And, and in fact, we are ourselves being pushed through that same pressure exactly. of our carbon essence. And uh, we are moving into photon light. We are moving onto a, a, a structure that, that will be light based, not just, again, the neutralization of the pressure of carbon. Right. But that's a beautiful. Thank you for bringing that. That's a beautiful description of the funnel of initiation that, exactly. that uh, pressures come. And from that, like the phoenix coming exactly. out, uh, exactly. he knew is a, uh, is a crude. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, my dear Chris, it's always beautiful and, and great to have these whole conversations with you. Uh, I, I hope we can do... Uh, soon a new one and thank you for sharing with us and thank you for allowing that sharing and creating a format for all of these people who are joining us and uh, that are our soul family yes and it, it's so wonderful for us to be able to perhaps uh, drop a seed here and there just i hope that all of these friends who are um, observing this conversation that we're having today will really begin to look at their DNA and to keep asking from whom have I inherited this and this and this that supports me releasing that so it's not bound in all of the things of the past but it's in its essence energy form and it takes us forward so my great Sorry. love to you and my gratitude to you Alberto and to everyone else thank you Chris, and thank you all for being here. Till next time. Till next time. Thank you. Two minutes. Uh, I was in. Uh,
Okay, in 1993, more or less, uh, I remember that because of uh, because of a book I have from yours, Sanar las emociones, the healing of emotion, yes. but the version in Spanish, it was in the early 90s when I found it and when I when I connected with the Light Institute, when I contacted the Light Institute. 95, I was studying in in uh, in the U.S. It was 97 then when I went to Egypt. And uh, I, I went with a very, I went with, with the author of a book called um, Beyond Prophecies and Predictions. She is Moira Teams. And I read that book and I wrote her, it was beautiful. And she answered me and she told me, you, you have to come to this trip, which is not a tourist trip. We, we will be in the temples and doing some other things and the archetypal understanding of the ancient Egyptian religion, no? So I went there and in one of those nights we were at Luxor and I was in a little boat, we were in a little boat in the Nile and I told her, you know, I have this feeling of going to the temple. Yeah, you just go there. And she told me, you ask for the Sufis, see if you can uh, meet the Sufis. So I went there and I asked for them. And uh, the, the mom it was a very special moment because uh, they told me, uh, in their in their Arabic English, they told me, "You just go and meet the lady of the desert." And I, in that moment, I I I um, related that to Sekhmet, which is the lion goddess. You know this lion goddess, which is roaming the desert, and but it's the alchemy, is 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 is, is the is the the alchemical goddess, so to speak. And uh, I thought for a long time that was it. But in 1999, two years later, I went to Galisteo, New Mexico, and I saw you in the middle of the desert, <laughs> doing all these, doing all these um, psychogenetic work, and open to that. Um, you know, these people, these Sufis, they were not a traditional from a traditional tariqa, they say, or a traditional. Um, order. They were uh, kind of the keepers of the ancient wisdom. They were there in the in the temples, and what I felt with them was this direct connection with the temple as a space or um, an architecture that, in itself, is capable of transmitting you the teaching. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I have tell you something and I haven't ever told anybody outside of Allison but but that alchemy of the desert I, I like that I love this idea because when I was young I always felt at that time I was so young I never knew anything about Egypt but I always saw myself walking in the desert with a lion right sometimes it was a panther Back. sometimes it was a lion and that's why you know the Rhodesian Ridgebacks are called lion they took they're lion hunters Exactly. And they use it in Africa to, to of course, I have a, a, a very good relationship with lions. Right. But, and, and dragons. Right. And, uh, <laughs> so exactly. I, I love that you came across that truth. Yes, you know? yes, and, yes. And we deep... all have, that's what I'm working on, and is, to, is to imprint in everyone that we have that alchemy. It's exactly. funny because I'm watching right now, have you ever seen that TV series? Um, Merlin? Yes. Yeah. I, I'm watching it now. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, my higher self, why am I looking at magic from the perspective of the Middle Ages? Right. You know, where they used it so much and, and uh, the way that they used it was so right. archaic. And that you and I, and I know from the book that you wrote, that you and I are working on a higher octave of alchemy. So it's not just can you change your form into a lion or a dragon, right? But can you transmute the limitations of the third dimension? And humans need that. And frankly, between you and me, I think we're in such danger right now of a of a of a global flip uh -huh. that will you know dissolve civilizations basically. Um, that it's it's really important that we. And practice that alchemy of bilocation. We practice that alchemy of, of 
of whispering to the trees and whispering to the earth, be calm, you know? And so we're in a very precarious time. And so it is very important to, to sort of, it isn't that we have to speak of it, but that we have to, we have to carry it. Right. You know? Because everyone is stuck right now. Right. And whatever powers that be have been making that happen. Right. You know? Wear a mask. Right. I find that just incredible. Yeah. Yes, I wanted to share that with you since the last week because I think it, it is a very strong connection we have, and we are we are uh, each and every night here in Cuernavaca. I see right in that direction how come how Sirius comes out and the brilliance the star has, and that's exactly the the that reminds me always of the it's diamond. Probably, it's probably a very strong point of our connection is that Sirius connection. I have it through my window. You know, my upstairs is all glass, oh. and I used to see all the constellations now. And then I moved downstairs, but, uh -huh. but I can still see Sirius every night. Uh -huh. And I talk to Sirius every night. Right. And I do that thing, you know, put your finger up and draw the energy in. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, Sirius did not, but I have to tell you that I've been watching a change in Sirius over the last couple of years. And this year, yes. in the Northern Hemisphere, it should have come up in late August. It did not come up in late August. It was way, way, way. I don't think I saw it until the beginning of November. And that disturbed me no end. Where was it? You know, well, Orion. Orion didn't, the constellation Orion, you know, which is how you find Sirius. Right, it didn't right. Show up. Didn't show up, and that means to me that we are we are indeed tilting. I I, I when I've been in um, Norway or not Norway, but Finland and up in the northern areas, I've noticed that for almost 20 years that our North Pole has been doing this. Yes. Now it's I, really doing that. It's really doing it. I totally agree with you because I expected Sirius this July, and it and I couldn't uh, see Sirius. And it doesn't come up until maybe 11 o'clock at night, you know, uh -huh. up here anyway. Uh, it comes up late, but it, it just wasn't there. And it wasn't there. And then when it first came up, Sirius was not its blue, uh, yeah, you know, beam. power that it has always been. You had to look for it and it just, you know, it wasn't, I mean, Mars is yellow, uh -huh. gold, so. You know, but Mars was stronger than Sirius was. It was right. very strange. Now it is. Right, you know, right. The Sirius that we've always known is blue, it's bright, it's pulsing. Right. You know, it is the biggest, brightest star now. Right. It wasn't. Right. That makes me question it and say, right. we, we have to, we have to do what we can do here to uphold it. Right. Now. Right. I, dear Chris. Well, it's beyond words. <laughs> I I love you so much. You know that I, I I really I really I really I really appreciate our connection. And I as well, Alberto. Yeah. We are truly. I I I've already known that that you know we've known each other from not just other lifetimes but other other uh, experiences of the soul. Right. Right. So we're working together now. Right. This is very important.